Oh, okay, this might be a, a bit long than I usually do, but let's try to make it short if we possibly can. Um, again, I'm on the uh, campus of the University of Fort Hare, the historic University of Fort Hare, where many uh, African leaders have come through, you know, the, the ones you already know, like uh, you know, Bishop Tutu and, uh, and, uh, and, and Nelson Mandela and Walter Sisulu and you know, a bunch of other, other people. Uh, my favorite uh, a leader of, of, of Africa for maybe, well, it's a Magnus or Robertson Bukwe went to this, graduated from this university. Uh, just, uh, I can't, you know, people came through it, it, it associated with Lovedale, people like Tepan Becky, even though uh, Chris Haney was here for a bit, Bibi goes at Lovedale, you know, a lot of people, you know, Robert Mugabe graduated from here, but the, the King Lesotho, uh, just bunches of people, Botswana, cats, uh, all over. Uh, came through this university, so there's a heritage here. There's a there's a lineage here. There, there is um, you know when you when you when you, people might not know it, but when you when you walk the same paths that uh, great people have walked, um, then it should somehow wash over you. But let's leave that alone for now. But right now, all of us Southern Africa, um, there's a, a student student uh, actions. Um, um, starts with the fees must fall, they want to pay uh, uh, the fees that keep on rising, which is what happens in capitalism, everything keeps on rising, as well as um, things like safety. Um, uh, for instance, uh, there's accusations that a company that's building new uh, dormitories here, new uh, living facilities here, have let out master keys to, to, and that old facility that well, is already here uh, are being broken into with these master keys and, and, and stuff is taking laptops, you know, with people's dissertations or whatever have you, has been, been missing. And uh, for the cause of that, um, right now, um, uh, uh, last night, uh, that company's um, headquarters or building here was set alight, burned down, or well, not burned down, but I haven't seen it, I went past there. Um, but, uh, but basically, this is how this, the students are, are, are reacting. Um, uh, also, last night, uh, the staff center, which, you know, staff center, you can say, um, I guess you would say that they uh, represent uh, uh, staff and, and well, administration, whatever have you, well, people feel that they haven't done anything. Uh, for them, they're not on their side. Uh, that staff center is like a simple, and that was broken into last night also. Um, all the buildings are locked, oh, I'm locked in my office right now. Um, but just to look a little deeper in, into this, I mean, you know, we can just say, oh, the students are just reacting, or they're doing what their grandfathers did, or whatever it is. Uh, but when you when you look at it, especially when you have something like, um, I just got a, 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 a what's up here, what they're saying, our black brothers destroy their own heritage. Let's look at that. Uh, yeah, what is heritage? These buildings, you remember this university was started by missionaries. And a lot of the, um, I mean, unless, unless it's a, you know, well, forts and all the rest of that stuff. So I'm over a bunch of minds with that. It's, it's like uh, in, 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 in our uprisings in the, in the 60s, even now, you know, when you burn down so called your own neighborhood, that's what you say, well, is this your own neighborhood when you don't control it, when you don't own it? You see? Uh, uh, when you say they're burning down your own heritage, well, what is what heritage are exactly we talking about? Are you talking about uh, pre-colonial, pre-colonial heritage, or are you talking about colonial heritage? Or are you talking about, uh, are you talking about uh, post-colonial heritage? What heritage are exactly are, are we burning down? See, all those are questions. But let me just uh, because I taught at um, University of of Cape Town, and um, I even I had a uh, an intensive course at, uh, at at Rhodes University, which is in Grahamstown, and because now I'm a school student in Fort Hare, so in those kind of academic circles I sort of know a little bit about, and because I've been in South Africa since 2003, I know a lot about the culture and hung out with, with a bunch of people and worked in the townships or whatever have you. So I know a lot, and I should say also, uh, because as an archivist, because that's why, or recordist, I should say, recordist archivist, um, at the DAS of the agency that I, that I was uh, working with uh, for a bit, uh, they would have these forms and they would have these discussions and I would record. So I have, as a recordist, I know a lot about the history and, and certain things uh, uh, that, you know, that take test, that's transpired in the Southern African region. Um, and I would uh, basically say this, uh, just, just staying with the schools for a while, each school has a different dynamic. Now, one of the things about the University of Fort Hare that I realized being here uh, for at least over two and a half years, or in this area for two and a half years, is that when 
when the students when the students come to this university, the only difference between that and a bunch of other universities is their the parents don't drop them off. Think about this. There's no you know. They almost like fend for themselves. If you go to Rose, you know, their parents are right there with them. You know, it, even here with, 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 um, uh, with international students, sometimes their parents will come make sure they're in, get where they get. This is like a, 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 a ritual in, in the States and a bunch of other places. When your, your parents are here, make sure you go to your administration, you know, you're, you're, you're registered right, you get your room or whatever have you. But that doesn't happen here at the University of Florida. A lot of these kids are on bursaries or, 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 or get a stipend, you know, to, to um, to get their education. In fact, uh, the, the thing, the fees must fall thing won't affect the University of Florida here that much because most of the, at least undergraduates, are on, on, on stipend, if you will, or, or, or get their fees paid. Um, this university graduates a lot of international students, which don't get those kind of bursaries, but it's like 80% of the PhDs and, and, the, and, the, and the masses, this is a statistic, uh, are are international students. So when you get to your postgraduate level, you know, then what happens is, uh, what, what has happened is basically the South African students, if you will, they've sort of fallen off. They don't go to that level, you see. So this is really about the undergraduates, which is a lot of interesting, it's just sort of interesting because during the days of, you know, of struggle, um, they had a slogan, I forgot what the slogan was, but basically it says, you know, uh, liberation, not education. It's, basically what it is. And so we had a whole generation of people that, that didn't get educated. They didn't go to formal school, let's put it that way, you know? And, and now you have basically their, um, their children, whatever, in this situation, and they're almost like burning down the schools or whatever have you. It's almost like, you know, uh, if, we don't, if we don't continue our liberation in terms of we're talking about economics or whatever have you, then no education. Does that serve anybody? I don't know, but there's no guidance again, for parents or for that generation that was never educated. In fact, most of the people that, that the problem with this administration, whatever happened, is these people, a lot of people in there were educated, but they sort of pimped the situation. So it's like, it's, ah, this, it's so, um, I won't say complex, because, I mean, you can, un, you can unravel it. You know, you can, as they say in South Africa, in Palm Springs, you can unpack it, and maybe it should be done. But even if you unpack it, you still have to have answers. You know, and I, I talk to some people about this, Give you give you an example. Um, everybody knows economics. Let's let's put it that way. So say fees must fall. Fine. Well, hey, but when are you going to replace me? Because you, you got to build your schools back up or whatever. You got to pay your staff, whatever have you. Um, do I have to, so say for instance, we got to get the economic plan, and uh, we, we let's just deal with the the whole uh, bankster class. You know where they where they have the. Uh, uh, what do you call those people? The stockbrokers, whatever. They, there's a thing called Robin Hood tax. You know, they want to get money from that little bit of leverage, get money from that. Say, for instance, you solve that problem, and so, and so you get money that will that will come in. But hey, what will happen with that money? You know, will it because you still have this uh, this middle, this management level, is these brokers in the middle. I don't call them brokers, but whatever they're in the middle, that will that siphon that this graft and corruption will will, will, will will take off. But also. You have to understand that because of the way this culture is, because of the, the, the political parties, you know, has promised people to give them, um, um, you know, uh, social grants or whatever have you, uh, that they're expecting money too. So say, say this scheme solves the education problem, but that scheme will be expanded, and so people will still be waiting to get a handout. You see, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of tricky. So it takes education and and a different and, and a different system. It's almost like you have to smash the system. I'm going to say whatever you want to call this system. The system that's not serving people right now, the downtrodden right now. Or for that matter, it's not serving the middle class. Because everybody is affected. In fact, the only ones that serve really is the, not even the, the ruling class, if you want to call it, because ruling class is just warders. You know what I mean? They're just like your wardens that, 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 that do the bidding of the elites. So only the elites that keep on spiraling up and, 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 and you know, they, they, the military or whatever have you, the, the arms dealers, they're there and they're taking that money and, and buying off the politicians, you see? So, so who's benefiting from this? Again, it's the elites. Anyway, this is just a. Uh, rambling. I'm sorry to be so long. But these usually I do my these these dispatches are you know are short, but this has to be said because that's what's happening here in Southern Africa. This is a uh, me T for the Pattersons taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect.